I live in coastal Southern California, between Los Angeles and San Diego. This is approximately 33 degrees north latitude, and water temperatures in our area are on the cold side. Reports from the local pier tell me that water stays mostly in the range of 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, and this is due to two main factors. The first is the California Current System, which brings cold water from the north along the eastern edge of the North Pacific Oceanic Current Pattern. The second is that this is an upwelling zone, influenced by offshore easterly winds that drive surface water away from the coast, and this pulls cold water up from the depths to the surface. This cold water is rich in nutrients, and bringing it into the well-lit zone allows for a very rich growth of phytoplankton, and this in turn supports an abundant and biologically productive marine ecosystem. Phytoplankton feeds zooplankton, which feed huge populations of sardines, anchovies, market squid, krill, and other small fishes, and these in turn support healthy stocks of predatory fishes, seabirds, marine mammals, as well as a local fishing economy. My area, the Southern California Bight, is a sector of coastal water in which the upwelling is a little bit weaker, and this provides for a safe haven for the reproductive of fishes like the sardines and the anchovies, whose larvae would otherwise be carried out to sea by the strong offshore movement of surface water. Another important aspect to our local marine ecosystem is the structure created by kelp, which for us is mostly Macrocystis pyrifera, a fast-growing brown alga that anchors on rocky bottoms in relatively shallow water and develops into dense forests that provide shelter, food, and habitat for the area's abundant marine life. Climate change has caused a general warming in Southern California inshore waters, and there's a documented increase of nearly 3 degrees Celsius since 1950 in the waters off of Scripps Pier in La Jolla. In some respects, predicting the biotic changes that come as a result of oceanic warming has been made easier by the periodic El Nino events that have, at various times since 1953, warmed our local waters by as much as 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. The bigger, less resolved, and inherently more interesting question is how climate change will affect the frequency and intensity of El Ninos. I won't try to address this latter question, but I do need to explain the general concept of El Nino and the highlights of El Nino's effects as it's provided us with a preview of what we can expect with warming. El Nino is a phenomenon that results in substantially warmer seas in our area, and it's the outcome of an amplifying or positive feedback perpetuated across the tropical Pacific. It could start with a drop in the east-west pressure gradient, which causes weaker easterly trade winds, and this results in a weaker push of warmer water to the western Pacific off Asia and Australia. Cooler oceans over there mean less convection and generally higher pressure, as well as weaker monsoons. This further weakens the east-west pressure gradient, and so the trade winds grow even weaker. Now back in the eastern Pacific, upwelling drops off, so no cold water is coming up from the bottom, and warm water sloshes back into the area from the west. The result is a massive buildup of heat-laden water in this eastern tropical Pacific, and some of this heat spreads northward into our area, cranking up local water temperatures. This has happened a few times since 1953. The changes to the local marine communities occurring during El Ninos are many. I'll just briefly highlight three. First, there's a dramatic reduction in upwelling, and this cuts off the main inflow of nutrients supporting phytoplankton. Without the phytoplankton, the overall productivity of the ecosystem drops, with the effects amplified as you move up the food chain. Top predators like seabirds and mammals are most severely impacted and suffer dramatic die-offs. The second effect seen during El Ninos is changes in community composition due to the increased temperatures directly. Organisms just move northward to conditions in which they're adapted. There are other related changes, though, due to different success rates in the two major species of forage fish, the northern anchovy and Pacific sardine. As water temperatures in the Southern California Bight increase above 14 degrees Celsius, conditions favor the reproduction of the sardine over that of the anchovy. Market squid and rockfish also decline during El Nino years, while other species whose ranges are typically further south become very common. The Humboldt squid and California yellowtail are particularly common catches during El Nino years. The third effect, which is seen only in the El Nino of 1998 and 1999, was a decimation of the kelp forests, caused by the unusually intense winter storms that dislodge kelp beds throughout most of Southern California. These violent weather events occurred because of the increased moisture content in air over substantially warmer offshore waters. All three of these effects, reduced upwelling, 
warmer water temperatures, and increases in violent weather events are likely outcomes of a continuation of the patterns of climate change that has already been documented. What isn't clear at present is how general warming will affect the incidence of El Ninos. Some models predict their severity to increase, while others predict them to eventually disappear.